Let us say you had a transceiver that could only work on one sideband. That's more common than you might think. For instance, a lot of non-amateur spectrum users only use upper sideband on HF. For instance, marine communication, outback communication, four-wheel drive networks, etc. Whereas amateurs on SSB generally use lower sideband on bands below 10 MHz. The problem is that if you have an upper sideband transceiver, and let's tune around the amateur bands, in this case 7 MHz, you can hear what is obviously SSB, but there's no way you can resolve it, no matter how hard you tune. Yep, you need a lower sideband receiver. What if I told you there is a method that you could resolve lower sideband signals on a transceiver or receiver that only receives upper sideband? And you could do it without any modification or special connections to the equipment. The good news is you can definitely do it. All you need is an audio inverter. It's an oscillator and mixer circuit that converts lower frequency audio signals to higher frequency and higher frequency audio signals like those around 2 or 3 kilohertz down to a lower frequency. Everything's inverted. So if you put a signal like this into it, which you cannot understand, because it's a lower sideband signal being received on an upper sideband receiver, then inverting the audio will make it intelligible. Here's an example. I'll just demonstrate it before I show you the unit itself. As you can hear, the audio through the inverter sounds just like an ordinary SSB signal. Here's a comparison. We're going through the inverter, hearing a lower sideband signal on upper sideband. Just unplug the converter. Um, as you can hear, you can't tune it in properly. Go back down to lower sideband. And there it is on lower sideband. As you can see, the frequency readout is a bit different. 7166 lower sideband, that's its real frequency. Plug in the inverter. And it's 3 kilohertz lower on the dial. As you can hear, the audio isn't quite as good through the converter. I think it's because of the levels aren't quite right. And I think I'm also using insufficient injection from the local oscillator, which I'll talk about later on. Can you do the same thing on transmit? The answer is yes, it's exactly the same. In this case, you connect your microphone to the speech inverter, connect the output of the speech inverter into the microphone socket of your transceiver, and if your transceiver is set to upper sideband, then you'll be transmitting a lower sideband signal through the inverter. What is the circuitry doing this magic? The answer is a converter. Unlike converters that most radio amateurs are familiar with, i.e. those used to change one RF frequency into another RF frequency, in this case the conversion is at audio frequencies. We have audio coming in through here from the transceiver. This stage is a mixer stage. 
a double balance mixer or audio people sometimes call it a ring modulator but exactly the same parts and just here is a local oscillator the local oscillator is operating on 3 kilohertz it's just a sine wave audio signal generator the idea is that let's say a 300 hertz signal was coming in through here it's mixed with 3 kilohertz coming from our signal generator and the output is 3 kilohertz minus 300 hertz which is 2.7 kilohertz or 2700 hertz so a low frequency audio signal coming through here is converted up to a higher frequency but if we look at the a higher frequency coming through here let's say it's 2 kilohertz then that's mixed here with our 3 kilohertz and the difference between them is only 1 kilohertz so it's a lower frequency output so the audio is flipped lower frequency becomes a higher frequency on the output and a higher frequency on the input becomes a lower frequency on the output because we're mixing it with our 3 kilohertz from the sine wave audio oscillator and a flipped signal is exactly the difference between lower and upper sideband nothing else to it This signal generator is a kit from Altronics. Any audio signal generator with sufficient output can be used in this application. Here's the audio level control. There's actually two audio level controls. There's some switches here. Just here I've got it at the maximum output level of one volt. If I drop down to 200 millivolts that's obviously not enough audio drive so the signal is distorted I'll just uh, drop the input down here at 1 volt the audio is clearer There's very few parts used in the basic mixer arrangement. Two transformers and four diodes. The diodes are just 1N4148 types. The transformers are not critical, although the sides that the diodes are on do need to be centre tap. This particular transformer is 8 ohm, the 8 ohm is on the transceiver side to 1k and this other transformer here is 3k to 3k. I tried another transformer here, 1k to 8 ohm and that worked fine. I could just power a speaker from it though the audio was quite low level. I might have had better luck if my audio oscillator had a bit more than one volt output. I think I'm under driving it slightly. What I've got here though is a one device audio amplifier. It uses a TL431 voltage regulator. I'll include a link to the video where I talk about that in more detail, but it's really not critical. If you've got a high impedance pair of headphones, you could even use that instead of the audio amplifier. You could use an LM386, that would be fine, or even computer speakers that have amplifiers built in. But here I've just got it driving a small speaker. This is the audio signal generator I'm using. It's got a sine wave output, and you can select various frequencies for the audio output. The important thing for this application is it needs to put out about 3 kilohertz and its output should be at least one volt. You should be able to find modules for audio oscillators on eBay, or you can do as I did and put together a kit. Something I should mention, and it's very important, is this mixer is what they call a double balance type. If I was using another type of mixer, 
I would hear a horrible 3 kilohertz tone coming through the speaker. And that's actually what I got when I was trying a simpler version of this with only a single diode. The double balance mixer does a good job of suppressing the input products that are unwanted, in this case the 3 kilohertz tone, so we can hear the audio without that horrible tone. At the top left the audio from the receiver comes in through the 8 ohm to 1k transformer though I really don't think that's all that critical even if you had a 3k to 3k transformer or even you might find something in old telephone equipment that's suitable the main thing is that it has a secondary winding that has a center tap you need that to apply your local oscillator signal there are four diodes, you need to make sure they're connected correctly. There's another transformer that you can see on the right. I used 3K to 3K, but I tried this circuit with another 1K to 8 ohm, and that worked okay. If you wanted to, you could just use a pair of high impedance headphones connected to the secondary of the 3K and still hear signals. Though, as you saw before, I had a small audio amplifier. If you're modifying a piece of equipment, you could even use the audio amp in that. Here's two applications for the unit. The example at the bottom is what I was doing, using an upper sideband signal to resolve lower sideband signals by inverting the audio. And with some fancy switching, you could use the same circuit to do the reverse on transmit, you would just have the audio inverter circuit in the microphone amplifier circuit and to do that, that would allow you to transmit lower sideband with an upper sideband transceiver. This is a quick example of what you can do with a ring modulator. It's just six components two transformers and four diodes, a sine wave audio oscillator, and you can convert audio frequencies, or in this case, invert them, so that high becomes low and low becomes high. Useful for many applications, including electronic music, or converting upper sideband to lower sideband without modifying your equipment. Something else you can do with this is to mess around with audio that you get from broadcast stations or other sources. Here I'm mixing the audio from the AM receiver with 10 hertz generated by the signal generator. As you can hear, it's giving a bit of jitter and some interesting effects. I'll just change that to 20 hertz. It's 100 hertz. Four hundred hertz. Hundred and fifty hertz. Now if I move it somewhere um, higher up. That's four kilohertz and with that I've inverted most of the audio. If you wanted to, you could connect this up to a transmitter and scramble the signal and the only way that you would be able to properly hear the signal is to connect another one of these up to the receiver and then it would um, descramble the signal or if you're doing this on AM you could just use a SSB receiver tune it in the opposite direction and you would invert the sideband and then hear it anyway so it's not a particularly secure way of scrambling your voice but it was used in some of the cheap cordless phones that otherwise you would be, have been able to pick up on an FM scanner
that's at four kilohertz. We'll just, just for fun, we'll go up to a higher frequency, like 10 kilohertz. There's not much. We'll just try somewhere nearer the middle of the audio spectrum. At three kilohertz. I'll just try some other FM stations. Just try 1500. We get some interesting effects when we go lower. This is 100 hertz. Now we'll go really low. This is 10 hertz. Big difference between 10 hertz now that's 30 hertz, that's 20 hertz. Would be interesting if we could go to lower frequencies than 10 hertz, but that's the lowest this oscillator does. <laughs> 